In this beautiful, flooded world, humans turn into monsters when they become lonely. But that loneliness takes plenty of different forms. Sea of Solitude is all about navigating dangerous waters, both literally and metaphorically. It's a story-driven adventure game with powerful and surprising moments. It reaches a narrative high point early, but unfortunately, it can't ride that wave for the entire story. The gameplay fails to evolve, resulting in a monotonous experience that feels like a missed opportunity when compared to its strong start. Guided by your trusty flair, you play as Kay, a young woman who is desperately trying to become human again. I adored traveling through Sea of Solitude's gorgeous and ever-changing environments as Kay works to get rid of corruption swarms in the hope of shining a little light for other monsters and herself. Sometimes these corruptions are a challenge to reach, but more often than not, they're, well, not. It's something to draw you through the world, but clearing them is rarely satisfying to pull off. As you explore both on foot and by boat, there are two specific monsters that serve as recurring obstacles. A shelled monster girl who blocks paths and loves to explain how you suck. You worthless piece of shit. And a sea monster that can turn crossing the water into a heart-pounding race. But you're not just avoiding monsters, there are also some you help turn human again by clearing corruptions and listening to their stories. And throughout the adventure, Kay is constantly reminiscing on her own behavior when it comes to the people in her life. Sea of Solitude does a good job tackling relatable situations that I don't often see represented in games, like Kay getting so caught up in her relationship that she neglects everything else. I've been feeling a bit, I don't know, fed lately. Hmm? That's great, Sunny. Hey, are you even listening to me? It was genuinely compelling, and I enjoyed getting to know the winged monster that helped her take ownership of her own shortcomings. Most of all, I respect that Sea of Solitude isn't all about happy endings. Things don't always turn out how Kay wants, but eventually she accepts that the right decision isn't necessarily the ideal one. Four years ago, we bought that house. So, my family home was just a rescue measure. It was a lie from the very beginning. It's a shame that Sia Solitude's heavy-handed writing often gets in the way of the story it's trying to tell, since it's hard to buy into a relationship where someone says this on the first date. You're the kind of person I could imagine having kids with. If that was me, I would be asking for the bill early. Overly dramatic moments consistently took me out of the otherwise engaging story, and the over-the-top voice acting didn't help either. But you're always moaning and whining and disrespecting me. Leave me alone! Scattered through the world are different collectibles to find, the best of which are the messages in bottles. They serve as both a fun thing to hunt for and an interesting and eerie reminder that others have been here before. While these are optional to the main campaign, going out of my way to get them was a great way to add an extra challenge. The other collectible you can track down is, by comparison, a snooze. You just have to find seagulls and shoot them away. That's it. There's no real point to it, and it seems unnecessarily rude to the seagulls. Shoo. Every area you discover looks beautiful, but a lot of it also looks extremely similar. This made it hard to tell where I'd been before when hunting collectibles, and made certain sections dull to explore. That said, the challenge of making it to the top of this tower was a welcome change of pace because it ramped up the otherwise easy platforming. There are other sections in Sea of Solitude that made me uncomfortable and anxious in the best way possible. The school chapter in particular was my favorite. I felt like I was living the nightmare Kay's brother Sunny faced every day. It was a good kind of awful that was narratively eye-opening. The school chapter also establishes the gameplay loop of meeting a monster, getting to know their problems, and then getting rid of corruptions until they're human again very early on. That's fun for a time, but unfortunately, it never really evolves in a meaningful or interesting way over the four to six hour story, which means it gets old by the midway point. Sea of Solitude's potential is never fully realized. It's beautiful to look at, but it ends up being a lovely splash in a shallow pond. The story was compelling enough that I wanted to see it through to the end, but the repetitive tasks within it lost their charm in the first half. There are some enjoyable, even magical moments in Sea of Solitude, but they're mixed in with some mediocrity that make it just a decent experience rather than a sublime one. For more from Sea of Solitude and other EA originals, you're already in the right place. IGN.